Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special edition of the show. Now I've got uh, Neil Newsom and uh, Simon Thompson here from Newsom Vineyards, and um, you know part of the part of the reason of coming out here to West Texas and the High Plains is to to really meet. And you've already the last two weeks you've already uh, seen me meet some iconic uh, either people or wineries. Um, and there's another iconic person here, um, and I, I don't know how many times you may have heard that, um, but and, and, but he Neil's very humble. Let's put it this way. So, but these these are like the pioneers uh, of Texas winemaking, and, and, and in Neil's case, uh, grape growing uh, and farming here. So, um, we're going to be having a chat. Um, we'll talk about some of these wines and, and uh, these you know how these grapes are how these grapes get into these wines. You may recognize some of these brands here. And um, we'll we'll just get started. Neil, uh, why don't you go ahead and get started? Uh, and then you know, Simon, you guys can maybe kind of interject, you know, like sure. your histories mm -hmm. and how you kind of got started. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Neil, let's get started. Okay, you know, how your sure, family, how, sure. you know, how you got okay. into doing this. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Simon Thompson. He is our first and I guess newest uh, vineyard manager. I'm trying to get to where I can slow down a little bit, and uh, Simon's here to help me out with that. And, maybe someday be running the show. Uh, we started planting uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in 1986. We started out with three acres. My mom and dad added two acres a little later. Uh, we've, we've added some acreage of something almost every year since then. We're up to 150 acres now. We have 16 different varieties and we grow for 14 different wineries in Texas, plus our son and daughter-in-law have a tasting room in Comfort, Texas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, it, depending on when I leave Saturday, mm -hmm. I might stop by the tasting room, but very likely I'm going straight home because I got I got to watch my Tottenham Hotspur. Well, you don't want to miss out. No, <laughs> come on, you Spurs! Come on, man! You got to beat <laughs> Not those Spurs. You don't want the Spurs. You can watch on on a. On a on okay, Simon, stage. you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Yeah, Simon, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Simon Thompson um, from South Africa, born and raised. Um, uh, I first met Neil about three years ago uh, through uh, his son Nolan, who was working at a winery called Bending Branch, which is uh, one of the wineries that they supply with grapes and make wine and so on and so on. Um, so it was quite fortuitous that we met and uh, kind of asked Nolan where the grapes come from. And he said, my dad grows them. Um, about 360 miles north from here, uh, from where I was. Yeah. Uh, would you like to go? So I said, sure. And uh, called Neil up and he said, come on down. So um, uh, that was great. And we met for the first time then. And, and I spent a couple of days here with him and they were busy with harvest at that stage. So it was busy, busy. I mean, I remember pulling into the yard and, and it was, hi, how are you doing? Uh, can you drive a tractor? <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, sure, I can drive a tractor. And that's what I did, you know, go, okay, we'll go down to mom's house and get this and that. And so it was great. It was a, it was a natural fit. Uh, me and Neil have got a lot of common interests. We've got an aviation background, Neil on the commercial side, more me on the sort of private flying side, but we both got a love for, for machinery and anything yeah. that flies. And the wine industry. So, so there was a nice synergy between us and uh, we, we kept in touch. And then when Neil sort of, you know, figuring out his path, his course for the, for the next uh, few years and he, and he would like to, you know, me to be a part of that. And, and so be working on that process. Yeah. Of um, you know, it's obviously not clicking your fingers, and you get the right permits and documents. You know, even if you tick all the boxes, and there's nothing, you know, no reason that they shouldn't let you in. It's still the process. Absolutely. So, yeah. So we 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 jumping through some hoops at this stage, but but we were on the right path, and uh, the plan is to you know be be part of this future with News and Vineyards, and the future for News and Vineyards is is very important to me. So we hope that um, we're faithful that things will work out. 
Um, my wife is a winemaker. She's been in the wine industry uh, for 20 years. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a natural fit for us as well. You know, yeah. How that all works, we're not sure, but we're on this train right mm -hmm. now. And, we, and it's, so far, it's, it's, it's looking good. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be part of, uh, of this. I mean, it's a, it's a new frontier in a lot of ways. Although with respect to Neil, he's been doing it 30 years. Yeah. So it's it's no no by no means he's a new kid on the block. But yeah. In, in terms of the industry, you know, and world recognition, and even you know being recognized in the other forty nine states, it's there's a, there's, a, there's we are on this incredible journey for Texas wine. I just feel that this is an amazing uh, revolution that's happening now. This wine revolution in Texas is is leading that. Yeah. And, and it's it'd be great to be a part of that. You know. I agree. I mean, I've been. You know, I'm doing the thing, this thing for 10 years. I've been, I mean, I've tasted Texas wines for close to 11 years now. Um, as far as going out and doing what I'm doing here today, I've only been doing it for about maybe eight or nine years, probably about eight years. Um, but, you know, going out to the Texas wineries in these last eight years or so and interviewing, you know, the quality that I've seen uh, from, the, from, the, from the wines is definitely increasing. Yeah. You know, and there's more wineries, there's new wineries cropping up all the time <clears throat> and uh, all different price points, all different quality levels. And but it's exciting because they're starting to become like, I think we're starting to get, I don't know if you want to call it a critical mass, but we're starting to get some momentum. It's gravitas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to, mm -hmm. to really have some world class wines uh, that are here. Um, and we're actually also, we're actually, this, this is actually where I've been staying. So this is actually your your, your bed and breakfast, Rock, correct? The yeah. the rockin' the rockin' B and B, rockin' in, rockin' in, yeah, yeah rockin' in bed and breakfast. We've been doing this for ten years now. So yeah, if you like if you like wine and vineyards and want to experience that, experience that, come stay with us. Come yeah. on, yeah, it's been great here. Um, you know, it, it's it's just a little bit north of, of the town of Plains, right. um, but I mean the skies are dark out here. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got back home. No, actually, when we left, when we left, it was even yes. darker, right? Even darker, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've been hanging out the last couple nights, so you know, I've gotten to really get to know uh, Neil and Simon um, for for quite a uh, really well now. So it's, it's been really great. Um, so let's kind of get uh, into so you know your family was was is, was farming, but they weren't doing grapes, right? Right. right. Uh, so how how that all get? Well, started? it's kind of a long story, but my freshman year at Texas Tech, there was a, a chemistry chemistry professor of Dr. Roy Mitchell uh, and then he talked about wine making and wine growing different parts of the world. He kind of compared West Texas to other parts of the world that had similar conditions which I guess the probably the common link there was altitude. Mm -hmm. We're 3,700 feet here you know high vineyards in California are 2,700 so to get that high you'd have to go to Argentina and Chile places like that maybe yeah. uh, northern Spain southern france uh but i was a small town boy going to the big city agriculture didn't <laughs> interest me at the time you know probably said never so here i am uh came back to the farm five years later uh, to manage or came back to plains to manage a cotton gin and uh got to helping my parents farm they'd bought a small farm to retire to and kind of fell in love with farming and then bought my own farm and then janice and i met and got married and and we uh we started uh, in 1986, as I said, we planted our first vineyards, and you know, I guess the rest is history now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. About how much do you have now, acreage? -wise? We have 150 acres now, mm -hmm. and then also the uh, Dr. Mitchell and Doc McPherson and uh, Mr. Reed, they were the three guys that kind of reinitiated the the modern Texas wine industry in 1976, I believe it was. That's when Yano Estocott. Yano Estacado Winery started, and they were the guys that initiated that. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and if you watched two weeks ago, yeah, two weeks ago, that's that's where where I was at. Oh, what's that? Um, so yeah, I mean, so I, I've been really experiencing some some great Texas history out here um, with Yano, and then of course with Kim McPherson, um, son of Doc, and uh, and now hanging out with Neil. So I mean, this is some this is some like. You know, these are icons of the industry. You know, this is like, this is if I, you know, went maybe 10, 15 years ago, maybe well, probably like 20 or 30 years ago and hang out with, you know, Robert Mondavi and, you know, and, and, those, and, wow. that, and that crew, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious yeah. about this. I mean, these, well, I mean, these are I'm, the people that, yeah. that, you know, they're, they're the pioneers. And I mean, 
California winemaking had been around for a long time, but then sure. when Prohibition hit, it pretty much just kind of like just hit pause, and then there was nothing going on until Robert yeah. Mondavi yeah. basically broke away, well, not by choice, but broke away, you sure. know, and, and, and kind of started that revolution. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. So we've got a similar group of people here yeah. uh, mm-hmm. between the people I've met with the past couple of days and other people I've met over the years. Uh, you know, including including the Bonarigos, including uh, uh, the Beckers, who I've never had on camera, but I've met them several times. You know, uh, and and the Allers, uh, who, who I've interviewed before. Um, and these are the people that were kind of at the beginning, right? You know, so right. I, I I feel lucky that I've I've met and had on my show or and or met these people. Yeah. So I mean, these these yeah. are yeah, these are these yeah. are people that pioneered it. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so you got about 150 acres. About how many um, varieties you got going on? We have 16 different varieties, mm-hmm. and of course, we have most of the nobles, and then some of the miners that some people have never even heard of is Tanat, Petit Syrah, Alvarino, mm-hmm. Alicante Boucher. Alicante yeah. Boucher. That's awesome. This is an interesting one. Mm-hmm. I like the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those I are. I don't know much about the wine, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, those are like just right behind us, right? That's Not correct. right behind us, but yeah. like yeah, yeah. But so the I'm first on, set of yeah, on this property here. That, yeah. that's, mm-hmm. that's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Alicante Boucher, Boucher is a tintier, tintier, yes. tintier, yeah. So basically, it's it's it has red juice. Yeah, it's yes. one of like five of them or something yeah, like that. They're quite rare. The, yeah, the, the flesh of the grape is yeah. red. Right? Yeah, the flesh is red, so yeah. it throws a lot of color in fermentation. Color. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's used it's used for like you know getting color and some other stuff. Yeah. But you, know, you can make some cool wines. I know I, I haven't had actually I don't think I've had any Alicante single variety wines from Texas, but I've actually had one Coppola makes one. It's all right, pretty good. You know, it was interesting to yeah. have. It's yeah. usually a blending grape. Mm-hmm. As a blending component, I'm gonna give depth and color to the wine. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm not sure what it is as a standalone, but yeah, it could it, be interesting, it, yeah. It's kind of like that since so we, yes. we drank okay. uh, last okay. night. Okay. Uh, so okay. from, uh, so Kim, thank you very much, Kim, gave me the bottles and so that we tasted. Um, and <laughs> so brought it back yeah. and we, we yeah. tried it um, mm-hmm. because yeah. it's definitely something that's unusual and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, wine people like to do unusual things. So. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Well, it's good that you can see the terroir out here because, I mean, the, the, everybody loves to say the word terroir. And I, I don't know whether that's something that's thrown around much in the States, but this is unique terroir. It is. Right Once you, yeah, I want mean, to talk about, you know, talk about, you know, between the weather and the soil yeah. and, and, you know, basically and everything about terroir. With and this, this yeah. is not for sissies. No. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not for sissies. The little, you know, cotton wool covered. So South Africans are really good for this, it's right? Not well, like, it's not like the movie. Is that what you're no, saying? No, it's not like the movies. Uh, <laughs> I don't, well, oh, no, the, the, we don't have the giant poster. No, it's, in, it's in my room, the giant poster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the movie Giant was not, not from here specifically, but like in this vicinity. vicinity. Yeah, yeah okay. this, this part of Texas. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what I want to say is that it's, 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 uh, we come from, you know, South Africa's very moderate climate. And we've yeah. got the, the influence from the ocean, there's yeah. mountains, there's, there's not extreme weather. Um, I saw stuff here that I've never seen in my life. <laughs> I uh, bet. Uh, um, intense thunderstorms, these massive clouds, these incredible winds, which I've been told are nothing. This is, you, you, have, know, you, haven't, not, you haven't seen a sandstorm. I haven't seen a sandstorm. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 Habu, I think I call it, or something mm-hmm. like that, which is, uh, you know, a rolling dust storm. Mm-hmm. Um, so being a bit of culturist, being a wine grower in this area is, is a challenge. I mean, I can imagine where everybody else is planting cotton and peanuts and they're going, what are you guys doing? You know, and then you get a freeze and you've got to cut the vines. Basically, they die. I mean, this mm-hmm. is the most gut-drenching, heart-drenching thing to have to do. And and suck it up, buddy. Carry on. And then you plant again next year. So just that right. Neil's kept going this long is is a, is, a, is a miracle, I believe. And, and um, obviously, the quality speaks for itself. There's lots of people in the industry that are after his grapes. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's a, it's a different growing environment here. We get a very pure fruit. Yeah. Um, there's low disease pressure. That's probably the, the biggest positive. There's right. low humidity, lots of UV, lots of sunlight, uh, good aeration. I mean, aeration is not a problem. This, yeah. fan, this fan is on 24-7. So there's, there's, there's a, a low fungal pressure, good ripening period. I think our biggest challenge is probably during flowering. Uh, the know, wind and the hail. The wind. And then obviously hail, which we don't want to yeah. say too loud. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, this is for information only. Yeah. We're not bragging because we'll get wiped out tonight. Yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. Well, we 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 hopefully, I mean, I'm faithful that that's not going to happen. But that obviously a thunderstorm came 
dangerously close as far as I was concerned on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, you got bright, bright, clear skies. The next minute, this huge thunderhead comes straight over my house. I think, okay, the roof's going to come off. Five minutes later, it's all gone. The sun's out. Deck chairs back. Cocktail. You know, we carry on. <laughs> I swear, like last night, I swear I actually heard like this low thunder, and I'm like, there was nothing around us really. Yeah. So I don't know. Just, I don't know what boom. it was. Yeah. For, actually, I, th I, what I thought what happened was um, I thought it was the people that you thought were might have shown up yesterday because mm -hmm. it was late. Yeah. I thought maybe they had just come through the door because it wasn't like loud. It was like really quiet, and I opened my door and like. No, yeah. no one's here. Okay, you know. Yeah, it's probably a thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, so it's very far cool. off, so, yeah. So these incredible, you know, weather, uh, you go from sort of far left to far right. You have mm -hmm. incredible extremes. Yeah. So it's 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 a challenge to just get the grapes, you know, out of the ground, let alone, you know, to the winery. Right. So, so, uh, so you mentioned, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand it, but I don't know if my viewers understand what the danger uh, during flowering um, is with, I mean, it should be obvious with wind, but... Like what is that? What would that do? You know, with with the wind and flowering. Well, uh, you know, wind at flowering. Of course, flowers are are there to pollinate. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of wind, that's pretty hard to do. And then also the usually when we're having these wind storms like that, it's out of the southwest from the Chihuahuan Desert and south or west Texas and in Mexico. The humidity is very very low. So it, it literally freezes the freezes the cap on the flower where it can't fall off at the appropriate time. So mm -hmm. you know you have a shot berry there. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. develop. It doesn't, it doesn't develop yeah, into it doesn't a grape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And they, they tend to call it it's shatter, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I, I sometimes I throw out terms and I want to make sure I use them right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, know, other parts of the world have problems at it at bloom time because of too much rain. Too much right. rain, you know, yeah. washes the pollen away. Yeah. yeah. You know, but here it's the opposite of that, but the same yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. But you're obviously spreading the risk because you've got you've got cultivars that that I mean, Neil said there's 16 varietals, three white and 13 red, mm -hmm. and they obviously ripen at a different time. Mm -hmm. So, so if you have wind on Monday and it's flowering, you know, as others are flowering Wednesday, Friday, you're okay. Mm -hmm. you right. Know, it, it doesn't hit everything at the at mm -hmm. the same time. So, it's it's it is the luck of a draw, or you know, in some situations. Right. Yeah. 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 And then uh, you're talking about like. Uh, during the winter time so we saw some examples of winter kill mm -hmm. um so the the yeah. trunks split and all that i've so not you, experienced yeah. it but it looks terrible yeah mm -hmm. um so it basically just it just gets too cold mm -hmm. and the the, yeah. the the vines the bottoms of the vines just can't handle yeah, it the, uh -huh. the vine dies from that split up so you have to come back and cut yeah. it off train up you know new new canes and, and cordons so we need a two-year program to get that vine back online yeah yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. the, the the real danger out here is that at any at any year you could lose a significant part of your crop to winter kill or anything else. Hail, yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that other parts of the world don't have their challenges that they could lose sure. the same thing, but um, sometimes they don't have those types of weather events. Mm -hmm. They may have other challenges that you you could lose you could lose stuff, but. Um, they don't have necessarily the same weather events that are in West Texas. Not as extreme. Yeah, and even like in Hill Country, they don't necessarily have these issues, but no. they have all the disease pressure. They've got incredible disease pressure. They yeah. also have uh, soil diseases and ebb uh, or viticultural pressures that we don't have here. Right, yeah. I.e. those some of the diseases they face with, which are quite serious, we don't have at all. Right. Uh, We've swapped disease and insect pressure for, for weather issues. For, for yeah. weather issues, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that was one of the first things yeah. Neil told me when I started asking yeah, yeah. about about you know the challenges that are out here. Yeah. Um, when we talk about the soil, uh, uh, first of all, uh, you're you're describing that you know there's a lot of sand here, and we'll just since we were talking about disease and insects. You know, we can talk about how um, it's not exactly conducive to phylloxera, but it's not like you said. It's not like you don't. You think it could survive here. Mm -hmm. It's just you just don't really have it out here, at least yeah, at don't. this point. Uh, you know, that that's always a risk in the wine industry because we're way out in the middle of nowhere. Most of the bugs don't have our phone number yet. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm not saying never again. <laughs> right. And yeah. uh, uh, wow. most of our vines are on rooted, and that's somewhat dangerous when you're talking about phylloxera. Yeah. But, but we tried grafted vines initially starting out, and and 99.9% .9 of those experiments, that's what they would have been, were complete failure. So we stayed on rooted for most of the uh, our, you know, the time we've been planting grapes. We're, we've slowly but surely discovered some different clones with different root stocks. Those combinations seem to be working good. 
rootstocks would be bred to be resistant or immune to phylloxera. Different clones are bred and selected to have different characteristics that the winemaker wants. Yeah, yes. And then sometimes even the characteristics characteristics that are easier for the wine grower as well less disease pressure thicker skins things mm -hmm. like that yeah and i mean you showed me examples of you know own rooted versus mm -hmm. grafted and there's there's definitely a difference when you look at the canopy and just the vigor yes. uh, of, of those vines yes you know so yeah. and the, the the soils here as i mentioned earlier were 3700 feet the soils here are considered low vigor soils mm -hmm. and when we were row crop farmers mostly cotton and some peanuts and some other alternative crops if you didn't fertilize those crops two years in a row, the third year you would miss a cotton crop, and I mean that literally. Mm. Then here we come along, we plant wine grapes, and they need almost nothing, almost nothing. Yeah. We add a little bit of nitrogen, and we do some foliar feeding for micronutrients yes. through the canopy. But as far as big tonnage doses of phosphorus and potassium and on and on and on, no, that would ruin a vineyard. They yeah. love, they love vo low vigor soils, yeah. rocky soils, shallow soils. Yes. Our soils here are all pretty shallow and, and we're not very far from caliche anywhere, anywhere from six inches to two or three feet. Uh, caliche is a cousin of limestone. It, it, they, they both are calcium carbonate. Limestone farms from fossilized marine organisms and caliche is actually a chemical precipitate that forms downwind of large deserts that I explained earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And these, these are forming over millions and millions of years. So yeah, you're getting I mean, like, you know, the most minuscule of, you know, Soil coming over here, and then mm -hmm. it precipitates yeah. mm -hmm. into the caliche. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes. I back. sound like I know something, but I learned it all from him. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, the the thing is that the vines are in balance, basically. Look, if you if uh, the crop load versus the vigor, mm -hmm. so you don't want an over vigorous over vigorous vine produces less fruit, and the, the reverse is also true. So these vines are in balance when they crop load. And I think that's where the good quality comes from. Mm -hmm. So it, they, they've found, I mean, it's taken Neil a long time to figure out obviously which cultivars match with, with, with the situation. I mean, that's the exciting part of the flip side is to, to, to plant other stuff. Yeah. Say Pinotosh, for example, yeah, uh, would be very interesting. I mean, we haven't discussed it at any length, but you know, it's obviously you roll the dice on something because nobody's done it before, right? You know, and and even situational based, uh, somebody down the road, 30, 40 miles, is not the same as us. Mm -hmm. So this is a very unique situation. So so the gems that that he has are ones that have survived and ones that are consistently producing good results. Yeah. So the recipe kind of works. Is you know, is what right. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually a subject um, uh, during my Yano uh, interview because, you know, they're about four or 500 feet lower than here. Okay. Or 700. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like 700. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're like, they're like right about 3,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so Jason was talking about, you know, even though it's about a, what, 60 miles? Mm -hmm. Well, on driving 60 miles, mm -hmm. that's a crow fly, maybe a little slow, but it's like about an hour-ish drive. You know, there's a, there's still a significant change in elevation here, and again, there's also differences. Not the elevation gives you differences in climate, and the weather patterns and and temperature. Temperature, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the soils are fairly. They look fairly similar. It looks fairly consistent out here. I'm sure there's little pockets here and there, you know, where maybe there's higher levels of caliche and lower levels of caliche and sand and all that. But um, I mean, it, the the soil seems fairly consistent, especially driving up here. Um, you're talking about like, you know, sandstorms and dust storms. Yes. Well, this is planting season, which I didn't quite figure out until I asked Neil <laughs> yeah. and I saw all these fields of just dirt. So yeah. I didn't know if it was like crop rotation or they were, and at first I thought, well, maybe they're leaving like an area fallow, like they're like, you know, cause I did see that in Burgundy, but it was grass. That's grass. Yeah. 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 And every once in a while, like in Burgundy, they just go, Hey, it's this time we need to rip up the vines. We're just going to let, let basically let the soil just kind of reset. Yes. And, yes. um, so I was like, that's kind of weird. It's all dirt. And then, yeah, it was windy. I mean, not super windy, but windy enough. And you see a little dust devils going around and like, sometimes like the dust just comes right over the, right over the road. And you're like, okay, I can slow down for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You cannot see. Yeah. But yeah, so this time of year, I could, you know, definitely, I'm gl basically, I'm glad I didn't get the car washed before I came up here. Because <laughs> I knew better. I knew better. I'm going to be driving six hours. My, my windshield's bug infested. Yeah, yeah. We do have an airfield here for next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Much well, better. I don't know. I don't know if my buddy Trey 
uh, from high school will see this. You probably won't, but he lives in uh, North Carolina, I think. And he actually is a pilot. Okay. Well, and he has like a two, private, private plane. Two runways. <laughs> they long enough for a jet, so mm-hmm. bring him yeah. on down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has a private plane. I'm like, Trey, <laughs> fly out here, and then we'll fly over here. We'll Sounds fly to San Antonio, and we'll fly over here. So, Sounds good. But yeah. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, and if you – another side note. Um, so, like, growing up, especially, like, taking family trips to, like, Florida – and, you know, we, we always drove at night. And there are always bugs hit the windshield, right? But as urban sprawl has has happened, it doesn't seem like, you know, the windshield, the, the bugs are, you know, sacrificing themselves in windshield so much anymore. Come out to this part of the, to the country, yeah. Yeah. that's where they're all at. And yes. during, it was all during the day, you yes. know, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've had our spring rains in the last two weeks. So, yeah. so they're, they're a little active. All yeah. of those open fields you saw coming up will be planted when you go back home. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. they were waiting for the rain, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah, that's what Neil's explained to me, yeah. that they're waiting for the rain, and, you know, they're, and they're doing their regular crops. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and one of the things uh, it's for, for let other people know is like, so, yes, there are vineyards out here. But they're pretty sparse. Like you don't. It's not like going to Napa, no. and or going even to Bordeaux or, or Burgundy, and it's just like vineyard after vineyard after vineyard. Like my first one I saw, I think it was in Brown Brownfield, and that's like what 40, 30 minutes, thirty five miles. Thirty five minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So from here, and it was like it's just vineyard off to the side. I was like, oh, there's a vineyard. Finally, after driving like five hours, <laughs> my first vineyard, <laughs> and then I didn't see. I, didn't, I then I saw like another vineyard. I didn't see anything else until. I got here and then Neil and I went to the vineyard behind behind the B and B and like that that's it and then even other than your vineyards mm-hmm. that you know on the highway uh, going towards mm-hmm. Lubbock nothing yeah ninety eight percent aren't aren't on the main highway you uh, will yeah. not see them no. yeah so yeah so if if you have plans to come out here don't think that you, you're going out to quote wine country mm-hmm. yeah you, you have a better chance of seeing vineyards going on two ninety mm-hmm. in the hill yeah. country I mean yeah. you, you call will. ahead for sure yeah call yeah. ahead mm-hmm. yeah. Call ahead. I mean, and you know, but, but yeah, it's been it's been a you know great experience coming out here because I haven't been out here in a long time. So well, the thing is, it's special if you come and visit, right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you go to Napa, you're just a number. Mm-hmm. If you come here, there's there's far more personal treatment, mm-hmm. and it's a unique experience. That's what was my first impression when I yeah. came to visit, and and I've been relatively spoiled by other places. So mm-hmm. so with that kind of yardstick, you come here and it's a totally different a different it is. feeling. You know, you obviously get. Neil's uh, hospitality and his wife Janice. I mean, fantastic people. So mm-hmm. come and experience that. It is. You so, know? yeah. I mean, that, so you have a saying about staying here, right? If you've been here 10 minutes and you don't feel like family, I've messed up. Yeah. And, and well, he, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I have felt like family from the moment Neil, uh, yeah. from the moment Neil, like, met, you know, met with uh, me here. I seen before, you know, we were, we were uh, conversing before I came up here. But, you know, as soon as I got here, uh, he, he showed up and, you know, it was like, let's go do a vineyard tour and let's do all this cool stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm walking around in my regular shoes and I hadn't even <laughs> packed yet. Um, so I didn't have my boots. Yesterday I had my boots. That was one better. Walking through the vineyards proper cowboy boots. Yeah, we were, like, we were, were so like work boots. Yeah, he was so pumped to get to the vineyard. He would have yeah. went barefooted if he didn't have his <laughs> yeah. shoes on. Well, you just got to get a hat now, proper hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, cowboy hats. Uh, now I did. So normally, <laughs> normally when I travel, I usually wear a baseball cap, yeah. and I kind of forgot that. Uh, granted, the, the my choices of baseball cap are usually the UT cap. Hook them horns. I know I'm in Red Raiders country. Red Raiders. <laughs> um, and, you know, and all that. But, hey, man, Texas Tech is an outstanding school. I mean, there, we got a lot of good schools here in Texas. But uh, uh, Spurs, which that'd be fine. My San Antonio Spurs. Yes. Or my Minnesota Vikings. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I've never, Go Vikings. I've never lived in Minnesota. I'm yeah. not from Minnesota. Yeah. I landed in the airport once during a transfer yeah. or something, but uh, purple's my favorite color. So. It's a cool team. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I mean, I've mean, i loved the Vikings as a kid. Yeah. But um, so those are usually my three options for hats. And I just kind of forgot. And as I'm driving up here, I was like, ah, I didn't bring. I was like, you know what? I could buy a hat. I was like, no, I'm going to buy a hat. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah, cowboy hats are just not my thing. You know, that kind of goes back to my uh, conversation last night about music. It's country music's not my thing. Yeah, I can yeah. appreciate it. I can tell you whether it's a good, a well-written song, kind of like how yes. I do wines. Mm-hmm. It's it's well-made wine. It's just not my style. Right. Country music is one of them. You know? Right. Right. But yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so a couple, just, I don't know, um, we hit on the highlights already. Um, we talked about the soil, we talked about terroir, we talked about the grapes. What, what's your favorite grape? You have you know, a couple favorite grapes, and why are they favorite? Yeah, that's why I want to know. Well, well I already know, you but know, I want him to say it. That was yesterday, so you know, next <laughs> oh, year they okay. may be different. Uh, <laughs> uh, right now, it's uh, Tanat and Petite Syrah. Yeah. Right. And the reasons are is they're, they're very consistent producers, even on bad years. Uh, right. The secondary buds are as fruitful as primary, so when we lose them, for whatever reason mm -hmm. that is, yeah. you can still almost make a normal crop, even yeah. with those varieties. Right. And... But the most important part is, is they're making some really, really good wines. Mm -hmm. Even when they, when those blocks were young, they were really good wines. Yeah. Which and that's, is unusual. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. very unusual. I mean, in well, my discussions and also hearing other people talk about, about vines, there's, they seem to have, they seem to be very much like people. When, I mean, you first you have the infant phase where they don't really do anything, right? And then you get that third or fourth year or leaf as it's called, right? Yes. Yeah? Okay. See, I try to use the right terms. Then you start getting something usable, but they're like, you know, they're like young, you know, they're right. full of life and, and vibrant and, you know, fruit, I guess. Yes. And then they go through that awkward phase, like a teenager, right? And almost yes. around those teen years almost. Mm -hmm. And then they get to a little bit more mature and they're more like adults, right? Right. I mean, does it seem to be that way? I mean, I've heard it described like that. Does it seem to be that way? Mm -hmm. That's a fair analogy. Yeah, yeah okay. Sure yeah, is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I've heard yeah. several people uh, use that analogy, and yeah. and just the conversations I've had with other people talking about like my young, my my vines are young, so my wines are like this. Okay, and then they get to another phase, and they don't necessarily put it that way, but I've definitely heard. Of course, you know, old old vine, which is a very loose term. You know, yeah, old wine can be anything. <laughs> Thirty to hundred. Yeah, mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And some some yeah. areas of the world actually define it, but it's pretty. Yeah. Even then, there's not a lot of them that do it. But yeah, yeah I mean, I the, mean, we have technically old vines here. You mean, do. The, yeah. The, the Cabernet is from. Uh, it's thirty years old. Yeah. yeah Thirty-four. There's the, 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 the some mm -hmm. what nine eighty six. Eighty six. Eighty six. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that's old. Yeah. I mean, in South Africa, we 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 that rotation. Uh, that's a double rotation for us. We were 15 years, you know, we, mm -hmm. we probably wow. started to replant. Uh, yeah. It's just the, the warmer climates, uh, the vines just don't survive that long. Their productivity also gets to a point where it's not commercially viable. So, right. you know, pushing the old vines mm -hmm. is something that mm -hmm. you say, well, we get less tonnage per, per acre, but we get a better price. Right. So it's worth keeping. Yeah, you know, but in this situation, it's slightly different. So we've got a, we've got a mix of young and old, and but it's a, it's across the board a great you know spectrum of quality. So yeah. the buyers and people that we we sell the grapes to are getting in an excellent sort of reference to what what's what's potential, what's available in in, in, the, in this in this part of the world. You know. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the average kind of yield that you get? I mean, it's not huge, but it's not like minuscule either. Right. Uh, a, a really good year for us would be three tons to the acre. Mm -hmm. but we're normally around two, yeah, you know, one and a half plus somewhere in there. Yeah, that's still pretty. That's pretty low. That's pretty low. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, the several reasons are low vigor soils mm -hmm. and yes. mostly our own rooted vines that we've talked about. Yes, and uh, uh, you know that's just the way it is. That's our terroir. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. of course that produces the most intense fruit. And, some people like to use the phrase "stressed wines make the best vines." So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. because if you if you put a put a vine in the the most vigorous soil and give it as much water, it'll 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 mm -hmm. take it all, and mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it won't produce a higher won't produce it'll mm -hmm. produce a grape. It may well, not be the best quality yeah. for a wine, but it'll it, yeah, well, you can it, make wine out of yeah, it. Yeah, let, let's bounce bounce back to weather just yeah. a minute. You you yeah. kind of touched on it earlier. Again, because of our altitude in our semi arid. Uh, climate, you right, know, yeah. high altitude. Uh, we have, you know, extremely high uh, sunlight quality days most every day. You know, in most parts of the world, or especially in California, you've got haze and fog, and and you've got mountains blocking your east and west mm -hmm. horizons. They have all of these elaborate trellis systems with dozens and dozens of wires to get the most leaf exposure they can and then they do all these mechanical leaf ro leaf removal to expose the fruit to sunlight. Well here it's just the reverse. We have a very moderate canopy. We Sometimes we have trouble getting enough shading not to sunburn the fruit. Yeah. yeah. So two different worlds uh, because again of our altitude we chill really quickly at night. Mm -hmm. Grapevines love that. Yes. They get to shut down and sleep during the night. Otherwise, if they're at a lower altitude, they have to transpire, 
you know, carbohydrates to, to move water all night to cool. But mm -hmm. here that's not the problem. Yeah. So we're, we're hot in the daytime, we're cold at night, so we're hot, but we're not. Right, yeah. And uh, I, didn't, I haven't really looked at your, your, your total like weather pattern here, but I know it can get really hot out here, but because of the altitude, does it, does it get like into the hundreds a lot of days, or is it just, or is it, I mean, I, I, I really actually don't know that. Yeah, well, we have 20, 15 to 30, probably 100 degree days per okay. year, uh, you know, and, and, and that's the low 100s, you know, and then, you know, 30 minutes after sundown, you need a windbreaker because you've already gotten chills sitting on the patio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we experienced that last couple nights, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. up stargazing, which is yeah. great. So, so I, so during the, the, I think the first day we were hanging out, you know, I tell Neil, it's, yeah, I, on my first degree was astronomy. Let me tell you, he and Janice know way more about the night sky right now <laughs> than I do. I'm sure they're getting my little app, you know, go, I got an app called Distant Suns. I can't remember at the time, but it's called Distant Suns. It tells me what's up. And he goes, well, what's that constellation? I'm like going, it, or that star. And he knew the answer. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, it won't tell me anything. And I feel, I feel, felt stupid because I haven't had to study astronomy in forever. And I was telling Simon last night that going, when I went to school, all the astronomers told us, well, we don't know constellations, but we know stars. But I still didn't know what the star was, yeah, you know, because yeah. they, they, they don't, they, that's how they think the actual pros. But yeah, but it was, it, it was great because, you know, he's, he's sitting there, you know, teaching me stuff that I either forgot or never knew. Yeah. Uh, and Janice, <laughs> but like last night, it's like, what are those two stars over there? I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to roll the dice. I'm like, well, it's Gemini. He goes, yeah. And I think you said from left to right, what are they? I just went, Castor and Pollux. He goes, what was Pollux and Castor? Goes, oh, <laughs> I had a 50-50 shot at being uh, right. I would, have, I would have given that to you. I was, I was, yeah. I was pretty impressed. <laughs> you know, I just kind of was like, two, there's two stars right next to there. And I kind of, yeah. I kind of in my head pictured, pictured like the yeah. symbol. Yeah. Okay. The, the astrological mm -hmm. symbol. And, and, you know. I would kind of what the constellation looks like, but I don't really remember. I that would one. have, uh, I would have googled it, but my internet wasn't working. Probably. Yeah, I, <laughs> so I, was, I, I played a really good guess. Yeah, um, we can't wait know. for satellite internet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but so, the yeah. skies are beautiful. I mean, you you will become interested in astrology if you're not. Yeah, uh, already, and, you know. And Just they've got out. the Sky and Telescope magazines here. I haven't even yet gone through those. Um, so I mean, if you're if you're a stargazer. Even if you're not a wine person, you should just come out here and hang yes. out, you know, and then yes. you know, then drink some wine too. You know? Yes, I mean it's it's kind of cool to drink some wine and look at the stars. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you have a huge diurnal shift here, and you know that definitely is beneficial for the grapes. Yes, yeah? mm -hmm. um, and like I say, you can get up to what, like thirty or so degrees difference or more. Yeah, we depending were depending on the time of year. Yeah, we were in the mid fifties this morning. And, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, you know that. It got to like yeah. eighty something, mm -hmm. uh, not quite, not quite, and almost ninety. Well, I don't know about here, but Lubbock mm -hmm. was a little bit warmer, mm -hmm. and that's even yeah, it's an hour away, seven hundred feet difference, and Lubbock, you know, was warmer, mm -hmm. uh, not by a lot, like a few, a couple, like maybe four or five degrees warmer, but it was warmer. Sure, sure, yeah, and um, it's just you know, I just had an amazing experience out here and, and hanging out with you guys and uh, learning more about viticulture. Um, and I, I mentioned it several times with Neil, especially on day one. It's like, I, you don't get this in a book. I mean, you could read about this Fair and enough, they'll give yeah. you the, they'll give you like the theoretical things, but to actually come out and, and see, you know, the sea winter kill for real, yeah. you know, instead of like in a book, you know, they do, you know, okay, this is what happens. Like, okay, they have pictures. Yeah. No, you see it firsthand. The, the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Just... You see the soil yeah. and how, and how it interacts or, you know, how, how the soil is, is, the, is set up. Um, you're seeing the canopies, you're seeing the differences in, you know, own root and different and different uh, yeah, stocks, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and all that. So, you know, this is this is why I do it on a personal level. It's not necessarily for the audience. It's just I do what I'm interested in. I put put it on video. And if people like it, cool. If they don't like it, I'm not going to worry about it, <laughs> you know. And maybe that's yeah. why I don't have millions of followers and well, views. Well, just, just wait a bit. Wait a bit. Yeah. That's why I just do it because I enjoy doing this. And it's it's yeah. still a diary of my studies. Right. And that's really what this video is. Right. Um, is well, we, thank you for yeah. coming. Can I say that? Uh, yeah, thank absolutely. Thank you for coming down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming I, know you, I know you guys don't get tons of visitors. Yeah. At least not visitors 
Well, we cleared like, the schedule like, like, for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, you know, and I, it was mentioned a few times, not just from, not just from you guys, Hold but other course. people, um, especially people in, in the, in, like my part of the industry, they don't necessarily make the trek out here. Yeah. And, and I'm going to call out some of my San Antonio brethren. There's a few of you that will travel, but most of you don't. And you're yeah. really missing out. You're missing out on the educational aspect. I know everyone's got a lot of time and it costs sure. money to do it. Sure. But you know what? You got a whole wine industry in your backyard. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money to travel to the hill country or even come out here, right. you know, uh, to, to experience this stuff. Yeah, you know, it costs a lot of money to even fly to Napa or fly to Europe. And that costs some real money. But, sure. you know, you can make day trips if you're in San Antonio or Austin. Make day trips to the hill country and go visit a few wineries and go back home. It costs you what gas and yeah. lunch yeah. and buy some wines maybe. Or you can yeah. stay the night here. Yeah, or you come out here. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it, it's worth the trip. So, and if you're not a, even if you're not a wine person, I mean, you should, if you're interested in wine, you should be tra- you try to travel as much as you can. But absolutely, if you're in the industry. You know, the best way to learn is to go out and experience it, just like any industry, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. you think a doctor, you want a doctor to operate who's never actually done it? Yeah. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna put in a plug now. Yeah, yeah, For, go for ahead. the tasting room is in comfort. Yeah, so, comfort, so, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, go visit Nolan. Nolan, yeah. Uh, Nolan and Kim, uh, yeah. um, the lady that works with Nolan, and uh, they've got all the wines and all the information. Yeah, uh, and they actually have know, some of- uh, A very cool spot we have as well. Mm-hmm. These right here, right? The ones with, uh, with you know, yeah. the Newsom Vineyard yes. ones. <laughs> yes. You want to talk about some of these? I mean, yes, we've these are all been yeah. sitting here. These are all partners yeah. that Neil works with. Yeah. Um, and they all make amazing wines. And the, yeah. you know, these grapes came from mm-hmm. up here. So, but you've also got your own label. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, first of all, I, I need to brag about our, our, our kids that are in the wine industry in, com- in comfort. Uh, Nolan and May, our daughter-in-law, own mm-hmm. and operate a tasting room in comfort. May is also the winemaker for Driftwood Winery at uh, uh, Driftwood. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, as I said, we grow for a bunch of different wineries. We do not own a winery ourselves. Some of the wineries that we grow for do these, do these labels for us. Mm-hmm. This particular one's from Yano. And, uh, and of course, May has a master's in winemaking, so she works at Driftwood, and then the wines that, that we decide we're going to make at these different wineries, you know, she sets the protocol and then goes by and, and you know, and critiques and adjusts whatever needs going. So, yeah. Right. I kind of joke, she's like the Texas version of the flying winemaker, yeah, right. kind of, yeah. not not really, but yeah. it was just that, that yeah. made me think about the mm-hmm. person who's like, this is how I want you to do it, and then and right. then mm-hmm. she just ch- checks up on him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is a Merlot here. This is from Mom's Vineyard, which is right by our house. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one here is an Inception. Inception. Uh, that's that's a red blend. There's not a set blend for that each year. Usually it's Tempranillo, Syrah, or Cabernet based, and those ratios can change and it can even be different varieties right we just yeah. do what's good for that year yeah and uh here's a rlv down here this is alvarino this is a great most people have never heard of this is a spanish varietal mm-hmm. uh it's a uh, spain's equivalent to chardonnay i guess that would be the yeah. Yeah, clo- be, closest yeah. Yeah. closest way to describe that yeah. and uh and that got a double gold at San Antonio. And then see, you've already heard Bending Branch several times. We we do quite a bit for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were the ones that talked me into growing the Petite Syrah and the Tanat. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, I knew what those wines and grapes were. They had no experience east of the Rockies, mm-hmm. so you're kind of hesitant to try new sure. varietals because some of those are, you know, there's quite a few tests. First, it has to live. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna survive like at least a year. Second, you know, it has to produce fruit under these conditions, Mm -hmm. and 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 then third, it has to make good wine. You know, those are all the tests that have to happen. And then, if the public doesn't know about it or the marketing's not right, you could fail again. Yes. So uh, they, these some of these wineries here shared in the risk of starting new varietals. Right. And what a state's another one with Tempranillo. That's what we did. Tempranillo and then yeah. um, and then Viognier. I mean, you know, when 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 the, when the industry was first starting, really here in Texas, where there was like a tourist industry or people going to the wineries, all they knew was Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay, maybe Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, that's about it. Merlot, right? Merlot, mm-hmm. Pinot Noir, but we don't really. I know there's some Pinot Noir out there, but <laughs> anyway. Um, <sighs> Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm not going to get on the soapbox about Pinot Noir in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
you know, then you introduce these other great varieties, especially a lot of the um, a lot of the Italian varieties. Um, I know you make some of those too, or grow some mm -hmm. of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, they're kind of foreign to people because mm -hmm. people don't people think Chianti is the grape. They don't realize yes. it's actually called Sangiovese. Yes. Um, they also don't know Brun what Brunella actually is. You know, right. it's just it's Sangiovese, but a different like clone basically. Different I clone. can see those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tempranillo. I mean, yeah, it's a Spanish grape, and yes, you know, Spanish is a prominent language here in Texas. You know, so many of our towns and words, street names are actually Spanish words, but, you know, Tempranillo still is a foreign word as far as a grape to even anyone who speaks Spanish. Right. Um, so, you know, you've got, you've got these, and Viognier is like, Viagner, what? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Aglianico, mm -hmm. like what? You know, yeah. so these are, these are grapes that, you know, do well. I mean, we actually talked about that, how these are the grapes that do well in this climate. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's why you're, you're growing them. Yes, you've experimented and you're like, mm -hmm. well, let's try it out. And mm -hmm. if it survived, cool. Maybe mm -hmm. fruit and maybe right. wine. Yeah. Right. Then you're successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, we actually, I don't remember if we talked, was there anything, any grape that you tried that was just an outright failure? I don't remember if we talked about that. Yeah, we've got two rows that have 20 or 30 or had 20 or 30 experimental, you know, you know, trials in these okay. rows and, and, and nearly all of them failed. And, uh, uh, the, uh, some of the Portuguese varieties, they can't handle the winters, winters here. They'd winter kill every, every spring. And, okay. uh, Zen worked really well, mm -hmm. but it, uh, gosh, it's such a high heavy producer mm -hmm. on a, on an average year, you know, managing the quality of that fruit in the end would be really, really tough. You'd have to mm -hmm. do something we're not used to here. And that would be take off excess fruit. Right. So <laughs> drop, yeah, yeah, crop, crop thinning. Yeah. yeah, crop yeah. Thinning and, yeah. Uh, yeah, because you don't really have to do that. Well, it's here. risky. Yeah, yeah I had it's there were several different muscats, and uh, and they all died pretty quickly. We've even done we we do grow Syrah. We did quite a few years of experimenting with Syrah. Syrah has had a terrible history in West Texas, and you know, and it's the clone root stock or own rooted combination, and and we're we're getting close to working that out. Yeah, and I think you showed me We those. do have yeah. a small yeah. commercial block of Syrah now. And, uh, you know, this is still an experiment, you know, you know, ask me again, this in a hundred years. Yeah. And, 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 and Cause we're all going to be around. Still. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, drink good wine. <laughs> yeah. Drink, yeah. Wine. drink yeah. Texas wine. Yeah. yeah. Drink Texas wine. <laughs> it, it's said all the time in the new world. It's said all the time that, you know, the old world has had hundreds of years, even in parts of the new world that have been making wine mm -hmm. for 150 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, South Africa making it for quite three, a while. Three more than three hundred fifty. Yeah, like the yeah. sixteen something, like sixteen fifty or whatever. Sixteen fifty nine. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, I do know stuff. Yes. Um, well done. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, like the United States, you know, we we had a we 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 stopped making stuff, and then it, we didn't really take it seriously for like even thirty or forty years later. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we we don't have the we don't have the the knowledge the the knowledge of what's going on. Right. To be able to say yes, definitively, this is the grape that we need to make here, or maybe we're just an area that can make a lot of stuff. Because even like Europe, they paint themselves into a corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I can only make yeah. Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do Sauvignon Blanc and Sombre and Burgundy, mm -hmm. and I can do Alicante. Okay, you yeah. know, and I can actually put Gamay and Burgundy, but I can't call you know. But you know, you're you're restricted to yeah. like four grapes yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, you know? yeah, here the restriction is not imposed by a Appalachian Control Area yeah. or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just, are you willing to take the chance? Do you think there's a market for it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's obviously it's its own risk mm -hmm. um, for yourself. So, so yeah, there's, I'm sure there's stuff that we, we could grow that may have market share. I mean, that's what I'm hoping to figure out with mm -hmm. Neil's guidance. I mean, what, yeah. what, what should we look at next or should we just stick with what we've got? Yeah. And you know, and build those out. Is there anything that I, I think we kind of talked about that? Is there was there like any? I know I said there's some grapes you want to experiment with, and you you made I think you mentioned well, a couple. you know, Simon point kind of drifted to a little bit the earlier. Pinotage. pinotage yeah, you, know, I know you asked was, me my opinion. You know, you know, that, Simon, you know that's, my opinion that's part of his roots. So you know, yeah. He's, yeah. he knows he knows more than anybody in Texas about t pinotage, but. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the Sinso. Sinso, yeah, Sinso, uh, which we had. I mean, that was a, yeah. I mean, it was an interesting example. Mm -hmm. I liked yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kim 
you know, last week mentioned that it's about as close to Pinot Noir as you're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to do some of the Portuguese varieties that, that have failed so far. So yeah, somebody yeah. needs to do the clone slash rootstock trial yeah. yes. on, on, you know, on their money, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have, uh, if, if I win a really, really big lottery, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. uh, maybe, help out with that. Maybe an um, SMG. I mean, we've got Shiraz, we've got Maved, mm -hmm. maybe a Grenache. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah, I don't so, know much something, of, of something that like that, yet. you know, because yeah. I, I, I like the Shiraz, uh, mm -hmm. the Syrah. Um, we have a little bit of a red, uh, mm -hmm. but enough to do something. And then, yeah, the Grenache mm -hmm. we would need. Yeah. So something something like that, perhaps, um, yeah, that which is a, a well-known, a lot of people know SMG, mm -hmm. right? And are familiar mm -hmm. with it. So mm -hmm. I, I think doing off the wall cultivars would probably not be a good idea in terms of people don't know what they are. Rather stick with the more yeah. mainstream stuff and then focus on that. And I mean, the idea is obviously we, we need to sell, you know, yeah, we don't wanna, we're not doing trophy stuff. You know, you have to make something that's commercially viable. So that, yeah. that's also the, the overriding factor as well. So it's, 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 it, there's a lot of risk in it, but like I said, we've got two of the components, maybe just a third. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that, you know, All right. use what you got basically yeah. with a little bit here and there. Yeah. And yeah. as I was, and miss, I was alluding to Europe has, it, I mean, while I kind of was talking about how it's not, it's not, it might be silly. They have figured it out. You know, Cabernet Sauvignon sure. probably doesn't really work well in Burgundy. It's just, it just the soils and the climate just well, really aren't really so it's the too best. cold or whatever the case yeah. is, you know, there's, 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 there's uh, obviously huge reasons why it won't. You, you yeah. can love it as much as you like. It might just not, there's no affinity for it in that area. Yeah. Right? So you're finding the affinity. And Neil's done 30 years in the trenches in terms of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. finding out affinity, you know, yeah. uh, you know what likes what. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so a huge amount of legwork has been done. And I mean, to his credit, other people have copied that. You know, the, the most of the wineries around here, vineyards are, are spawned from, from this vineyard. Yeah, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, right? Exactly. Uh, but but to his credit, he's mm -hmm. done the he's taken yeah. the hits for it, you know. Yeah. And the uh, and the pats on the back. So it's it's a it's a good situation. Yeah. 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 Every, every year in the spring, it's usually about the last Friday in April. We have Newsom Great Day way out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And to 200 and 250 people drive this far. Yeah. To participate in that tells a lot. Yeah. You know. You know it. It's free, but it's not. You know, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. burned some gasoline to get here and some mm -hmm. hotel time. Yes, yeah, yes, and, uh, yes. But it's, it's a good thing that you do that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. open door policy, right? Mm -hmm. Which has mm -hmm. helped so many people. Yeah, yeah, and it's viticulture and winemaking courses. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. And we're, we're. I was cool. lucky enough to attend that. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, the tide rises all ships. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If, if one person wins, everybody wins. Exactly. You know? No, I mean it's it's about brand Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the push. Which you know, it's uh, not quite there. I mean, I know there's there's a group of people that really are trying to 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 do that type of thing. Yeah, you know, I know the Go Texan thing. Yeah, you know, and it's not just wine; it's like a bunch of stuff, but it's yes. still not like quite like no. Well, I mean, like a wine Australia thing. You no. know, where they really pushed. I know they kind of destroyed the Australian wine industry, but you know the you know that idea of well, the, you know, or wines of Rioja. You know, all these all these organizations that really are trying to promote their their regions. Yeah. We just don't really have anything exactly like that or well, nothing that's big. Well, a lot of the Texas wine doesn't leave the state. Yeah. And that's what's difficult. So Almost it not. never crosses a state yeah. line, let alone a continent yeah. or an ocean. You know, it, it, so that's, that's kind of like, first let's, let's get statewide and mm -hmm. then you get, you know, right. countrywide. Yeah, so yeah, we're not still going to supply the world really anytime soon. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a, there's a, a lot of you know bridges to cross before that. But yeah. I mean the potential is there in terms of land and space. There's no problem here. Yeah, we have the space. Heck, I I I mean, Greg, I don't know if it was suitable for for viticulture, but I definitely drove by places you know here that don't have it looks like they don't have like any crop, and they're not and they don't have all the oil derricks either. Or not the derricks, but you know the, the pumpers. Pump mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're like, there's just empty field. There's just grass. And yeah. I, you know, I'm sure someone owns water, it. Waters are basically a... Yeah, water's a limiting use. factor. You want to talk about water a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we, I, sure. last night we talked about there was an aquifer here, but mm. it's it's kind of spotty in certain mm -hmm. areas that mm -hmm. you've got it, some areas you don't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah it, the, all of the water from this area, or from the Midwest, I guess, comes from the groundwater, comes from the Ogala Aquifer. There's no surface lakes here, so you have to... You have to drill down to this aquifer. It's about 200 feet, 
And this aquifer goes all the way up into Canada. It's, it's on the eastern flank of the Rockies all the way up. But it's not a continuous formation. There's these little islands of water. You know, we're kind of on the western fringe of this island right mm -hmm. here, and that's why there's no neighbors for four miles. Mm -hmm. There's not even any windmill water for a while. Then it mm -hmm. starts again, and, and it's that way all over in this area. And that's another big advantage of wine grapes, is they take so much less water than cotton. We're and even back. Um, we were talking about water, so we're going to kind of recap a little bit about water, and then I think we're going to kind of wrap things up because you know I think you know we've gone about an hour or so. Okay. So uh, water, and um, that's one of the limiting factors here. And uh, uh, you were talking about the aquifer. So do you, and, and Neil kind of glanced over here, so he knew about where he was, mm -hmm. and I didn't see where it cut off, but. Yeah. Um, so the aquifer. We should maybe say one thing that all yeah. the all the all the the water supply to the vines is under the ground. Yeah. So right, it's, yeah, it's, your irrigation is underground It's not too, yeah. an overhead yeah, irrigation about. system because that's obviously prone to evaporation loss. Mm -hmm. So so the, the 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 vines have water supplied by a pipe underneath the ground, which is a dripper tube, as you probably know, and that's in the middle of every second row. So it, it encourages the roots to move towards the water. It's also about a foot or so deep, mm -hmm. and it's not in the path of evaporation, and it's below the evaporation level, so everything under the ground is actually conserved. Yeah. As opposed to an overhead sprinkler that is either be blown away by the wind or evaporates. It doesn't get to where it's supposed to right. be yeah. going, right? Yeah, even, but, even a drip line that's hanging on a wire is not going to be as efficient yeah. as the underground right. drip yeah. that we have here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and in the reality of things like the regular road farming, that's they pretty much have to do what they're doing. They, they have, have to have, have a those pivot, big, mm -hmm. those big things mm -hmm. that you know, the big circle things, but yes, yeah. yes. Um, so yeah, we I think we were talking about like you know, there's enough water for what you need, right? Um, mm -hmm. and you could have some slow, slower expansion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but as long as you're being you know, conserving water, um, you should be able to handle that type yeah. of stuff. Maybe. I think the limiting factor ultimately is the market as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to conserve a price point. You don't want to flood the market. You want to keep quality good. You also right. want to keep your price point high. Yeah. Ish as possible. But you yeah. also want to be able to, you know, as soon as the industry grows, the demand grows, and there we all benefit. Mm -hmm. As you're saying, the rising tide raises all boats. I Absolutely. Mean, so yeah. uh, space is not a consideration here. We can plant. We can do that. We've got enough water. Yeah. You just got to, you know, be able to move everything as well. So it's, it's a, you, you got to play the game carefully. Yeah. Which Neil has done successfully. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, I think we're going to, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for, You're welcome. thank you. Thank you, you know, for basically the last two days pleasure. hanging out with thank me. You. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we still got today. We're going to, we're going to do some more stuff today. Um, well, I don't, are you joining me on this or no. I'm on my You'll own? You'll be right? solo today. Right, I'm solo. Mm -hmm. But so Neil's kind of got me set up with a couple other iconic people, um, which is going to be yes. pretty awesome. Now, whether I get interviews or not, I don't care. I mean, yes, if I get interviews, it's great. But I just want to meet these people because I actually don't think I've ever met either one of them. Okay. So maybe Bobby, Bobby Cox. I may have met him. Um, but BJ, I'm almost positive I've never met. Um, but you know, he's, his, his name always comes up with, you know, vineyards, you know, the ready vineyards. I'm like, yes. oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'll be meeting uh, those two people later on today. And if I, even I get like a short little snippet, awesome. If not, you know, at least I got to meet some cool, some other cool people mm -hmm. out here, you know? Um, so, uh, again, the B and B, uh, you should check it out. I'll have a link. Uh, well, Newsom Vineyards and everything's on that. Mm -hmm. You know, the B&B &B and everything's right. on there. So click the links below. Uh, you just links up links above here for any friending up you want to do on social media. Click to subscribe. Click to subscribe. <laughs> you know, watch me on YouTube. Watch me on iTunes. Um, you know, whatever, wherever you, or the website, uh, however you want to watch me. And uh, gentlemen, that's it. We'll, we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right.